Hey guys, Joe here from TTA Performance. And today we're gonna to go over this 81 Daytona 500 pace car behind me. Kind of give you some details about, a uh, little bit about the Daytona 500 car, but mainly the differences between an 80 and an 81 Turbo 301. And you know, how to check to see if you actually have an 81 or not. And also just some things to look for if you're out shopping for one. So let's take a look at this car. All right. Here we have the 1981 Turbo Trans Am Daytona 500 pace car. This is one of 2000 made in 1981. This is not to be confused with the 1980 Indy 500 pace car, as there was more of those made and there's obviously some differences in the paint color and so on. Um, so I'm gonna go over some details, mainly about what the difference is between uh, an 81 Turbo Trans Am versus the 1980 version and then also some specific details about the Daytona cars. So let's take a look here. This is a 55,000 mile car. And one of the first things that we're gonna take a look at is the interior, as the interior is special to the Daytona 500s. Uh, this has the Recaro racing style seats. These only came in the 81 uh, Daytona 500 pace cars. And it's a pretty, uh, pretty nice seat. They're very comfortable, a lot of side bolstering and so on, uh, a very, bold interior color choice of red and black. Uh, looks very nice. So some of the features that we're gonna go over, uh, 81 specific. First thing we see right here is that the cruise control stock, this is 1981 having the on off switch right on the stock, whereas 1980 just has the, the cruise button on the end. Um, being that this car was built for, uh, to be sold in the United States, it has computer command control, which was GM's first version of uh, a computer for engine management, for, for fuel and for spark. So right away we noticed that we have a diagnostic connector here. This is for the GM dealer and even some of the aftermarket uh, companies to have a handheld scanner that would plug into this to check fault codes and also to monitor sensors that were on the engine. Um, this one here has the, <laughs> it's very rare that you see this cover for the five pin, which this has. The five pin diagnostic connector, also sometimes called the ALDL connector, uh, this is 81 only for GM. Uh, by 1982, this connector had grown uh, over five pins and was that way all the way to about 1995, right before what they call onboard diagnostics uh, version two came out, which was 1996 and up. So yeah, five pin, you can actually short two of the pins, A and B together with, and just jump them together with like a paper clip or a wire. And you'll be able to flash the fault codes through the check engine light. So speaking of check engine light, let's move on to that. Where is the check engine light on an 81 Turbo Trans Am? Well, I'll put the tilt wheel down here. It's actually in the speedometer at the bottom. And one of the things, if you're looking to buy an 81 uh, Turbo Trans Am or pretty much any 81 GM vehicle, you wanna see if that check engine light works. And like I said, this is a bulb test when you turn the key on. If this is not on, odds are somebody pulled the bulb out because there was an active fault code and it was keeping the light on and they just got annoyed with looking at the light. I tell people a lot of the time, the 81 computer is very dumb. It is not like today's computers on today's cars. Uh, it basically commanded something to be turned on and thought it was on. There was nothing feeding back stating that it was on, that it was working, nothing like that. So it is possible you could have a fault code and the car would run just fine. Like I said, a lot of people ended up pulling the bulb out of it. So if you wanna see, you got the bulb test here, the light should go out after you start it to tell that all of systems are working and functioning properly and that there's no active fault codes. As you can see, this one goes out. And that's what you wanna see. So, where's the computer? The engine computer is actually behind the center console. And in 1981, they molded the console closed. As you can see here, the I have a video of the 80 pace car that I had and they had a plastic cover that went over this and the, and the boost light switch was over here to, to turn on and dim the boost lights. In 1980, they did that because 
behind there was only the electronic spark control module. And in 1981, this, like this one here, having the engine controller and a spark control module, yes, they're two separate boxes. They're stacked on top of each other. There was just no room back there anymore, so they just molded the console closed. So this is a one-year-only center console. Now, in order to access it, to service it or anything like that, we have, and it's poorly installed here, we have this clip, this retaining clip, because when you take this retaining clip out, there's an access door here, and that's where both computers are hiding. And it's kind of hard to see, but we have this white connector or clear connector, and then behind the wiring here is the blue connector. It's kind of hard to see. And that is for what we call the ECM or the engine control module. Now underneath it with this connector right here is a smaller silver box and that is the electronic spark control module. This is very similar to the 80 but it is different. There's actually more wiring going to it. Um, this electronic spark control module just like in 1980 it's only used to retard the ignition timing in case there is uh, detonation. Um, it is not in control of the timing advance, that is all done in the engine computer. And the distributor is different in 1981 because of it. There's no mechanical advance, no weights, no springs, no vacuum advance on the distributor is completely locked out and all timing is controlled through the engine controller here. Now, this clip, a lot of people don't know that they're missing this clip on an 81. I am starting to reproduce this clip. Um, I don't have it on the website yet. If you do need one, feel free to give me a call or send me an email and we'll get you hooked up with one. So since the ignition, or not the ignition, but since the uh, center console is molded closed here and where's the, the next question is, where's the turbo boost light switch? Well, it's over here on 1981. It is behind the power window switch. And it does your, it's a rocker switch on this vehicle, whereas 1980, it was a toggle switch. So that kind of sums up the interior of what's going on in here as far as the, the differences in 1981. Now, I had mentioned before, it, this is only computer command control vehicles that were sold in the United States for 81. Because in 1981, if you actually had one of these exported to Canada, let's say, it did not have the engine computer. It still had the spark control module, which was pretty much the same carryover from 1980 but it did not have the diagnostic connector. It didn't have the engine controller in there. The center console is molded closed though. And one of the ways that you can tell if you have an export or not is looking at the speedometer. If the speedometer, if the white numbers are in kilometers per hour and the darker numbers are in mile per hour, odds are it's a, an export. Another way to tell if it is an export is it'll have the 80 style distributor with the vacuum advance, mechanical weights and springs, and also the power enrichment valve. So moving along, let's take a look under the hood at some of the differences for 1981. I apologize if there is uh, any wind noise as it is pretty breezy out here today. We'll go over to Hoodbird real quick. 1981, the Hoodbird kind of got toned down compared to 80. Uh, the feathers are open. It's a two color bird, except in the case of a black bird like this one, it's just one color. But in 1980, the bird feathers were filled in. There was four colors to it and uh, like I said, they toned it down in 81, the feathers are open, and it's only a two-color bird in 81. Oh, apologize for the wind. So here we have the, the 81 Turbo 301, and right away we notice that the air cleaner is different. The lid is different. The base actually has um, what they call a charcoal ring on the inside of the air filter. And this is because an emissions device Basically, any uh, fuel vapors that were evaporating out of the carburetor, the uh, charcoal, the activated charcoal, would actually take out the hydrocarbons. Um, it's just epoxied into the base of the air cleaner. You can see that the this is a little different too for the crankcase breather in '81. They have this box on the outside versus the filter that's usually on the inside. Uh, this one, of course, is missing uh, the what I call the air intake accordion. Um, so, while we're over here. This is another feature of the 81. The brake master cylinder is different in 81. It's actually an aluminum body. They call it a quick take up master cylinder. And the uh, plastic reservoir is offset on the turbo version. 
the non-turbo this would be this would be centered but on the turbo version it was actually offset to get it away from the air cleaner a centered one will still fit but it just gets kind of close to the air cleaner most of the time when you bought a, a new master cylinder from the auto parts stores they gave you one that was on center a lot of times even my car has that um, so it's kind of nice to see and if you do have an original reservoir to see the offset like that right here we have a map sensor and a barometric pressure sensor they look identical the map sensor is actually reading engine load and so basically vacuum and boost the barometric pressure is just for altitude readings to make sure uh, to see if you are in a higher altitude or not it has to make changes to the settings in the computer and how you can tell them apart usually by the connector um, the orange connector is going to be your map sensor and it's going to have a hose attached to it now that hose is actually going to the uh, steel line that's over on the turbo I'll wait for the wind to die down a little bit here that's going to go to the that's going to tee into the turbo uh, so it could read both va engine vacuum and boost the blue connector is your barometric pressure sensor it looks like a hose would connect to it but one does not so don't go thinking you're missing a hose or somebody disconnected it or something like that because uh, nope it's just left open to atmosphere now since we're on this side of the engine there are a couple of things and I probably can't get the pictures of them very well there's a couple of oh right there there it is let me see if I can zoom in right there that little blue connector is on a tan wire that is left open nothing is connected to that that is you ground that wire in order to set the ignition timing with this computer controlled distributor now don't plug nothing into it nothing goes there don't try grounding it you know because you're just going to have base timing all the time there is one other connector similar to that it's a little bit more downstream i probably can't see it from here it's it's in the harness over there it is uh maybe i can see it is this it yes it is here we have a green connector on a green wire again nothing connects to this this wire is specifically for uh measuring the duty cycle or dwell of your mixture control solenoid on the carburetor now without getting into huge details about it basically the carburetor has a throttle position sensor for measuring how far you're opening the throttle and telling the computer and then there's a what they call a mixture control solenoid which is actually controlling the metering rods um, giving it less or more fuel and the pulsing of that can be measured at that connector so there's it's just a diagnostic connector it's left open nothing's connected to it don't try grounding it or anything like that now over here the air pump is different in 1981 uh, the body is the same i believe the body is the same but the pulley is smaller than 80. and also the pipe the air pipe going between the cylinder heads that's got a different shape to it in 81. the diverter valve on the back side of the air pump obviously is much bigger and has a lot more going on we have solenoids hooked up there's a lot of solenoids on this car on this engine for the uh, for the computer to turn things on and off now there is a air pipe there is a second air pipe on 1981 that comes off of here and actually goes down again i apologize for the wind it goes down to the passenger side of the oil pan and runs back to the catalytic converter that, again 1981 only and we talk about the holy grail being the uh, hose accordion going to the air filter this is the next one for 81 this red solenoid right there that solenoid is a purge solenoid very hard to find they all get baked and brittle from the heat of the turbo and basically disintegrate and you just they, they're not available there is another solenoid down farther over by the thermostat housing that is the solenoid to, to turn on the EGR valve again 1981 US spec only so uh, of course the uh, where is it the charcoal canister is different in 1981 there's more hose connections and so on and then we come down here since so oh, apologize for the wind again <laughs> it's a beautiful day it's just windy uh, 1981 the up pipe they put a narrow band oxygen sensor in there and that's uh, giving information back to the engine computer and this is a two wire sensor uh, kind of unique because most gm obd 102 sensors are single wire and ground through the threads whereas the turbo cars 
got a two wire sensor that had a separate ground, which is kind of a nice feature. Oh, moving on, of course, we have the distributor that is mentioned before is completely locked out. Um, there is a flat four pin connector coming off the base of the distributor that goes to the electronic spark control. So one of the unique things about it is that if the spark control box goes bad inside the car and you lose spark, just like in 1980, um, this one here, you can actually unplug at the distributor and you will have base timing and that's it. And it'll start. Uh, the only problem is you'll have no power because there's no uh, timing advance going on. So it's kind of a nice thing to get you out of a jam in case your electronic spark control box goes bad. But really, the, <laughs> the more proper way to do it would be just to buy my bypass board and keep it inside the car. <laughs> and then you can just bypass the ESC and it'll allow the um, timing control to still work properly off of the engine controller. So that pretty much wraps up what's going on under the hood as far as differences. Um, trying to think if there's anything else. I don't believe there is for 81. One of the things I want to point out is the turbo wheels. In 1981, the turbo wheels actually got narrower by half an inch. Again, apologize for the wind. <laughs> so a lot of times what ends up happening is it's kind of hard to determine or, or tell the difference between the 79 and 88 inch turbo wheel, 79 being on the 10th anniversary car, and the 81 seven and a half inch. Now the proper way to measure it would be to have the tire removed and you would go to the inside lip. So basically behind this lip, inside to inside, measuring the width of the rim and you should measure seven and a half or eight inch. Um, one of the ways to tell or I, that I can usually tell is you look at the center cap. Now if the center cap is almost flush with the machine surface of the rim, you pretty much you have a seven and a half inch wheel. Uh, if this is actually inset more and the dish is a little bit deeper, that's going to be an eight inch wide rim. So, if you're sh out shopping for turbo wheels, make note of that because you don't want to get caught buying a set of turbo wheels finding out three of them are eight inch wide and one's a seven and a half. Now this car is supposed to have a door decal that me mentions the Daytona 500. Uh, race but uh, they're not applied to this car they're actually in the trunk and of course one of the main features of 81 would be the bird on the gas cap door this is an 81 only thing uh, but a lot of people have installed them on 79s and 80s because they like it the 80 tur 81 cars are uh, the outsides are white and black the two-tone on them they're not uh, gray and white like the 80 versions and it about sums it up so here we have our 1981 Daytona 500 pace car. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe and you know even share it. And uh, you know this one here is already sold, so there's going to be some modifications done to it. It's actually getting a gear change with 342s. It's going to get an upgraded turbo, my upgraded exhaust, all kinds of performance uh, add-ons being done, and we'll document that when we get to it. So you know. Be sure to stop back, check out uh, the YouTube video. Also, check us out on Facebook at ttaperformance.com. There's a lot of stuff that gets posted there, too. And, uh, hey, have fun out there. If you need anything for your turbo car, be sure to get in contact with me. Thanks for watching.